Took the uh, range the other day, and uh, a couple buddies of mine were looking at all my range gear, and they suggested that I do a video on uh, on my range gear. It's it's been described as prolific. <laughs> uh, I have a, a a pretty comprehensive set of, of gear, in addition just to the uh, the normal uh, stuff that people take to the range. Uh, especially for, for load testing and zeroing sights and, or scopes and uh, things like that. So uh, I thought I'd do a little video on all my gear. Uh, you Maybe uh, learn a few things about some of the uh, products that are out there available uh, that make your life easy at the range. I'll start out with my range bags. Now this is the Midway USA Competition Range Bag. It is absolutely the best range bag I've been able to find, uh, primarily because it's huge. Um, I have a lot of gear, and uh, this thing is about the only thing that, that can hold it all. Actually, I have two of them to hold it all, but uh, for uh, th I have one bag for my when I go to a pistol or, or a rifle competition. Uh, I take this this bag, or if I go to you know an indoor shooting range, something like that. Everything I need is contained in this one bag. Uh, on the outside, it has uh, a big pocket on the side here that acts as a platform for cleaning my, my firearms. Uh, uh, you know, just basic work on, on my firearms, so I don't uh, you know don't get dirt or anything on them. You know, if I'm on a if I'm out in the field, that kind of thing. It's got enough room here for about 16 of my. Uh, uh, magazines for my 1911 and uh, it's got a pocket in the back here for paperwork and things like that so that's one of the outside pockets uh, on the end here it has a pocket that I use uh, for my uh, my eyes I have my uh, my uh, glasses in here and, and whatnot it's got a spot here for a soda, so I can carry a soda to the range. On the other side, it's got two nice, nice large pockets. I have my cleaning gear in one, and in the other, I have my uh, magazine uh, loaders. I have uh, some extra batteries for my uh, scopes and red dots. I have my uh, bore sighting, uh, you know, laser sight uh, uh, cartridges, that sort of thing. On the other side, I have my uh, ears. I have, you know, several different kinds of uh, ears. I've got my molded set. I've got my uh, Howard Light Impact Pro, or Impact Sport, rather, uh, muffs. Now, these are electronic muffs. I like them because they fold up into a nice compact package like that, and then I can just fold them out. Uh, it's got your on-off and volume switch here, uh, fully adjustable. I like being able to hear what's going on around me, and uh, I can even crank them up a little bit and uh, uh, hear people's conversations from a long way off, but don't uh, you know, keep that to yourself. Uh, it also has a, a port here so that I can uh, plug in my phone to the headphones, and in between stages then I can listen to music or uh, you know watch a video, things like that, and hear the sound through the muffs. And the uh, shots then will still be uh, attenuated. Um, uh, you know, when a, when a shot's fired, it, it cuts it out. So, uh, you know, I really like these. Howard Light uh, Impact Sport uh, muffs. They're not expensive. They're, I don't know, 50, 60 bucks, something like that. But uh, it's the best set of muffs I've been able to find. Uh, electronic muffs, anyway. Now, the middle compartment has a couple nice features. One, it's huge. But it has a removable stage bag. So I can just take this out and just take, uh, you know, it has room for my ammo. It has my, my brass bag here. Any, any respectable reloader will have a brass bag to collect brass with. It's got uh, pockets in here for up to six of my magazines. And it's got room in here then for my ammo. So, you know, all I gotta do is pop this out and I can take it to a stage. Uh, and I have everything I need for that stage uh, without having to carry the entire bag. Now, it's got two uh, pistol pouches 
uh, on the sides here. Uh, this is my M&P 40L uh, Pro Series Core uh, with my uh, Delta Point uh, red dot from Loophole and I got a TLR1 uh, light on it. So it's uh, this is my uh, competition uh, firearm uh, for you know USPSA and uh, Steel Challenge things like that. And it's got a second pistol pouch. This one I have my uh, my 1911. This is the very first gun I bought. Uh, I bought this back in 1979. Um, I've been taking incredibly good care of it. I'm gonna uh, uh, will this to my son Cody. Uh, and I told him if he ever sells it or gets rid of it, I will come back and haunt him forever. This is my family heirloom uh, basically. It's got a few modifications. It's got a magwell on it and it's got you know some upgraded uh, parts and, and trigger and, and so on. Uh, I used to use this for competition but uh, I've since switched to the uh, to the M&P. One of these days maybe I'll put a compensator on that. Okay. So that's the uh, that's my range bag. Uh, I use it for pistol competitions. Uh, when I go to a rifle competition, I just put you know a different set of ammo in it, and I don't uh, I don't put the pistols in it. So it's uh, it's big enough to carry everything that I need. Now, when I'm out testing loads or zeroing a scope, that sort of thing, I've got a second one of these uh, that uh, is set up with my range gear. And essentially, it, it, I have my I have ears and eyes on the sides, just like a normal. I got uh, my cleaning cleaning gear and my uh, uh, magazine loaders, things like that, in in the pockets, the same as uh, with the other bag. The big difference between that bag and this one is that on the inside, I've taken out the stage bag, and I use I have my range gear in it. This is my uh, magneto speed. Uh, bayonet style chronograph. I'll go into more detail on that one in a little bit. Of course I've got a stapler uh, for stapling the targets up. And this is my chest bag. Uh, it's got a harness on it here so basically I can uh, I can mount it on my chest. And what this has I've got you know a set of pens and uh, and whatnot. I've got uh, my uh, it's designed to hold a kestrel. It's got a pocket uh, specially uh, designed to hold a kestrel uh, wind meter. This is my uh, kestrel 4500 NV uh, uh, weather meter with uh, Bluetooth, and I'll show you more about that in just a second. I have my. Uh, my notebook here. Now this this is one of those right in the rain notebooks. R I T E right in the rain, and the paper in this is weatherproof. So even if it gets wet, it won't get all soggy like a normal piece of paper. Uh, I use these when I'm out in the field because more often than not, uh, uh, they'll get wet. Um, it rains every day here in Florida. Uh, I also have a space pen. Uh, which is really handy. Uh, it'll write upside down and, and all of that. Uh, back when uh, NASA started going to uh, space, uh, they decided they needed a pen uh, that could write in zero gravity. As ballpoint pens, you know, we, we, we you know, rely on gravity to, to push the ink down. So they spent millions and millions of dollars developing a, a, this pen that would write in zero gravity, and this is the result. Uh, the Russians, of course, when, when faced with the same challenge, they use pencil. Uh, but the U.S. being the U.S., any chance we have of spending money, uh, we'll take it apparently. So that's my space pen. Now the chest bag here is also designed, like I said, to carry a Kestrel. And I carry, it has er enough room in here. It's got a uh, little thing to hold the uh, tripod. It's got a, uh, you know, loops for my 
uh, weather my uh, wind vane. So I have everything in here that I need in order to set up a little weather station. Let me show you how that sets up. Take the uh, tripod. Set up. Get my wind vane set up. And there I have it, my, uh, my little weather uh, station for out in the field. Uh, it, you know, uh, my Kestrel 4500 NV with Bluetooth, uh, it's got a, a wind impeller there uh, for wind speed. Uh, and the, uh, you know, the vane will cause it to um, turn as, it, uh, as the wind direction changes. And I've heard people complain about this and that when you're shooting into the wind, in other words, the wind is coming this way, you can't see the data on your Kestrel. And I don't understand that because all you have to do is turn it around. But for some reason they give it a negative review because when the, when the wind direction changes, it you can't see the screen anymore. It, it, it's a simple matter to, to do that. Um, so I don't understand the, the negative reviews on, on this. This thing works great. The other thing too is that uh, uh, you don't really need to see the screen uh, and I'll show you why in just a minute. So that's my, uh, that's my range bag, uh, my range gear uh, and it, it holds the gear that I need for testing loads and for uh, you know like I said, zeroing a scope, things like that. When I'm going out to the outdoor range and I'm going to be shooting the rifle, I'll bring this along with me and it's got, uh, it's got all my gear. And I'll go over each of these uh, pieces of gear separately. I mentioned uh, you don't need to see the, the Kestrel screen in order to get the data. The reason for that is I use a, a phone app called Straylock Pro for my ballistics uh, calculator. And this is a fairly extensive piece of software. It, it, it does everything that, that you could possibly imagine. Uh, essentially, you put in the distance, uh, wind speed, things like that. You hit the calculate button. It'll tell you the, uh, the bullet drop uh, in MOA, uh, mils, inches. Tell you how many clicks on your scope you need to, to click up, down, left, right, that sort of thing. <clears throat> Uh, you can put in details about your, your firearm, you can put in details about the ammunition that you're using. Uh, just, you know, everything you could possibly imagine, uh, uh, this thing will do. Um, you can uh, select reticles. Um, let's see. Oops. You can uh, just so many different things that it does. Uh, all the different settings you can give it. Uh, it's, just, it's just an amazing piece of software. But uh, the reason that you don't have to uh, uh, see the screen on the Kestrel is this software will automatically pick up data from the Kestrel device. Of course for my video it says cannot connect. Let me try that again.
There it goes. So it's receiving data from the Kestrel device. It's got the, uh, the temperature, the humidity, the density altitude, the barometric pressure. Uh, it's getting all of those things from the, uh, uh, the Kestrel device. Let me uh, give it a little wind. I'm indoors here, so there's no wind. So let me uh, blow on it here a little bit and you can get some wind. And look down at the bottom there as the wind speed changes and you'll see that it uh, dynamically updates the, uh, the uh, bullet drop and, and the number of clicks and whatnot. Also updates as the, uh, the wind direction changes. But uh, so you really don't need to see the Kestrel if you're using Straylock Pro because it picks the data up directly from the uh, Kestrel device via Bluetooth. Uh, so if you're going to go out and buy a Kestrel, uh, I highly recommend you get the Bluetooth version uh, and you can use this uh, Straylock Pro. There are other apps that use uh, the Kestrel devices and connect uh, via Bluetooth, so uh, highly recommend it. Uh, this thing just does everything. I mean, it it uh, it will show you the reticle. It'll show you the holdover uh, based on uh, you know wind you know the, the the distance and the uh, the wind direction and whatnot. It's got just a huge number of reticles that you can uh, select from. Uh, so I'm sure you'll be able to find your reticle in there. Uh, it's just a really neat piece of software, Straylock Pro. It's available from the the Google Play Store, I'm assuming the Apple App Store has one. Uh, but it, it does a lot of different things. It, you know, prints up little ballistics tables here, and you can email it to yourself and print it out. Um, you know, a lot of different little, little features. Every setting in the world that you could possibly imagine. But I use this with my Kestrel, and that'll give me, uh, that'll give me, uh, uh, automatic wind speed direction things like that uh, so that uh, uh, it takes that into account when it does its uh, ballistics, ballistics calculations along with you know the the uh, bullet uh, uh, diameter the weight the you know the ballistic coefficient all the, the usual things that you would uh, uh, expect from a, a ballistics calculator after years of uh, fussing with a, uh, a standard chronograph, the, uh, the light kind with the, the light bars and everything on it, uh, that don't work during cloudy days, and I tried the lighting systems for them and all of that, I finally gave up, and when the Magneto Speed V3 came out, I went ahead and picked one up. And this is a bayonet style chronograph. Uh, basically, it, uh, it straps to the barrel of your uh, firearm, and uh, so your barrel is, is right, or the muzzle of the barrel is right about here. And then, as the bullet exits the barrel, uh, it goes across these sensors in the bayonet, and uh, it measures the bullet speed that way. Works very well. Uh, comes with the bayonet, comes with several of these little uh, spacers. I've got spacers on here for my gun. Uh, so that you can adjust it and get it uh, uh, get it adjusted uh, just so for your uh, for your particular rifle. It comes with a remote uh, uh, box here that uh, shows you the bullet speeds, uh, and you can uh, you can go through different series of, of uh, um, shots. You can you know it'll take up like I think it's like 99 shots per series and. There's 10 series or something. It's about a thousand shots or so. Uh, you can also get a uh, adapter for it so you can plug it into your PC and uh, download the data that way, either into an Excel spreadsheet or, or into a, a comma uh, deline delineated uh, uh, text file. Uh, it comes with a little micro SD card uh, that you can uh, it plugs into the top uh, here, and uh, you can uh, pop that out or, and pop that into your PC and transfer the data that way if you don't want to do it via USB. But it's real handy. It comes with a little uh, uh, setup bar here, so you can lay that on here and, and make sure that the uh, 
barrel is, is in the right uh, position. I'll uh, go ahead and mount this on my uh, Remington 700 and show you what it looks like. Uh, but it works uh, works very well, and uh, it's not sensitive to what you know the light. You can use it indoors, outdoors. Uh, it, it's just so much better than the uh, the uh, old style chronographs of yesteryear. Mounting the uh, magneto speed is fairly easy once you've got it uh, set up with all the proper spacers and everything. Uh, essentially. You just uh, undo the strap a little bit. Get right out here near the end. You want to make sure that your muzzle here, or the, in this case the end of my muzzle brake, uh, isn't uh, too close to the the bayonet. And you just ratchet it down a little bit. Tighten up the thumb screw at the bottom. You can do this while the range is hot, so you don't have to wait for a ceasefire like you do with a, a regular uh, chronograph, the uh, kind with the skylights and whatnot. Uh, so you can do all this without interfering with everybody else at the range. And they, uh, they just keep right on shooting. There we go. And then you can check it. It comes with a, a bar here. You lay across here. And you just make sure that the uh, muzzle is just above that bar and that'll give you about the right spacing uh, between the bullet and the bayonet. Now another check that I like to do is to take a cleaning rod. I always have a cleaning rod in my uh, rifle bag. And just make sure that the path of the bullet is not going to hit the uh, bayonet. If the bayonet is, is angled up a little bit, you know, it may clear here, but it may hit the end of the bayonet. So I use a, uh, a cleaning rod just to make sure. I take one of those with me. It's easy enough to pop a cleaning rag in the, or a cleaning rod in the, uh, in the bag. And it comes with a couple different uh, uh, cables. Uh, you know, we've got a kind of an expanding one here that uh, uh, will uh, will go back down into uh, you know you can make it any size you want and it'll go back down. And then there's a uh, port on the bottom here. That you plug this into. And you plug the other end of the port, or into the end of the wire, into the magneto speed uh, unit, and then it sets up for uh, it's ready to shoot. Um, you know, it gives you the shot numbers, the min max. It'll calculate min max, average speed, and the uh, standard deviation. Uh, for each of your shots, and then you can uh, select which uh, uh, series you want. This it's on series one now, and then once I'm done shooting that series, then I can I can change the series number and uh, uh, you know shoot another series. So I can separate my shots uh, by series, and uh, that's really all there is to it. Uh, it uh, it's ready to go. It only takes a few minutes to set up. You don't have to wait for a ceasefire you don't have to you know interrupt the other guys at the range 
uh, to set it up uh, like you do with the uh, yeah and if the wind blows one of your uh, one of your uh, uh, mounts off of the other kind of chron chronograph then you, you, you're stuck until the next seats fire uh, with this you can do all the adjustments you need to make and uh, do everything you need to do uh, while the range is hot great little device Now here's the uh, Magneto Speed V3 mounted to the end of the barrel here. Uh, one day we were out at the range uh, testing some loads. Uh, and there's the uh, control box that uh, shows the shots. And of course we've got our ammo cam uh, set up as well uh, so we can see the shots uh, as we take them. This is my bullseye ammo cam <clears throat> from bullseye uh, camera systems uh, basically it's an MTM ammo can uh, with a camera embedded in uh, the side here on the inside are the electronics uh, there's a battery there's the uh, camera here and then there's a wireless router uh, have the antenna and a uh, stand here. Basically what you do is you turn it on, mount the uh, antenna, and then you use the stand to angle it up so that it points at your target. So you put this about six or eight feet in front of the target, and then use the stand here to uh, angle it up and you angle your antenna straight up and down and uh, you've got a uh, target camera uh, now I don't have enough time at you know at the range during a ceasefire to set this up and film it and all that so I'm gonna I'm gonna show you how to set it up and and uh, use the uh, software uh, here in my uh, courtyard <laughs> out back so uh, we'll go ahead and do that next okay I'll try to do this quick because the neighbors get nervous when I set up targets in the courtyard <clears throat> I've got my Caldwell uh, portable target holder set up up there and setting up the ammo cam is pretty quick uh, basically we move about six to eight feet away from the target we take the Stand in the antenna. <clears throat> I'll connect the antenna here. And unfold the stand. And then what I can do here is I have my phone app for the bullet cam set up and what I'm going to do is use that to set the angle of the ammo cam so that it's pointing right at my target just a little bit here now on the phone app the, uh, the target is kind of wide but it works just as well also on the uh, antenna once you've got the angle adjusted, you set the antenna so that it's straight up and down. If it's uh, pointing down like this, the Wi-Fi signal goes right into the ground and doesn't work as well. Okay, so there we have it, pointing right at the uh, target, according to my phone here. If you can see that on the video, I kind of doubt it. And that's all there is to it. And we go back to the uh, shooting stand. Well, there's two versions of the software. Uh, there's the PC version and the uh, phone app version. There's an iPhone and the Android versions. I don't know if they have a Windows version or not. I can check into that. But uh, this is the PC version. Uh, as you can see, we have our targets uh, lined up there. Now, I've simulated some shots on here so that... Uh, my neighbors, uh, they, they get really grumpy. Uh, well, they get nervous when I set up the targets, but they get outright grumpy 
when I start shooting at the targets. So uh, I just simulated uh, uh, some shots here. Uh, basically, this is the uh, view of it before I start shooting. Now, every time I take a shot, then I hit the space bar, and it'll show me where that shot hit. Uh, as you can see, I'm a little high and to the right there. Uh, take another shot, hit the space bar again, and it shows me where that shot hit. Now, normally the uh, target doesn't move that uh, quite that much, but uh, uh, apparently the target's moving when I put the uh, bullet holes in it. And another shot. And it basically what it does is it flashes, uh, or alternates between the previous shot and the current shot, or the last shot taken. So uh, uh, you can see exactly where each shot hit. Uh, And it, it, it works a whole lot better than a spotting scope, believe me. Uh, spotting scopes just aggravate me no end. Uh, so I can, uh, I can use my bullet cam, or ammo cam, uh, bullet, bullet, bullseye camera system, I guess it is, uh, to uh, see my shots a whole lot better than I can with a spotting scope. Now, this software has a lot of different features. I mean, you can set up profiles with the, the ammunition you're using and so on, and, and uh, you can overlay that data on the, uh, uh, on the images. Um, so you can you know, know exactly uh, what you were doing, what day it was, who was shooting, what kind of rifle, what, which rifle you were using, what kind of ammo you were using, so on and so forth. And there's a lot of other uh, uh, things you can do. You can, you can mark your shots. Um, yeah. and cover up all the previous shots and then uh, uh, take new shots. Um, so it's it's got a lot of different features, you know, as far as profiles. It can do multiple cameras. Uh, a lot of different things it does. I won't go into all that because uh, you can go out to bullseyecamerasystems.com and see a demo of all their stuff. Uh, now the version that I have is the uh, the sight in version, the ammo cam sight in version, uh, which is good for 300 yards. I can add a, uh, a receiver to it uh, for about 150 bucks, I think, uh, and get out to like 600 yards, something along those lines. Um, but generally, I just use this for for sighting in my my scopes and for uh, load testing, things like that, where I'm only shooting you know a couple hundred yards, and. Uh, like I say, it works so much better than spotting scope. Now I'll show you the uh, the uh, phone app uh, as well. It's it, the phone app is not as uh, uh, comprehensive as, as the, the PC app. It doesn't have all the profiles and everything. It just gives you a very very basic functionality. As I mentioned, the phone app isn't quite as comprehensive as the uh, PC version. But it gives you all the functionality you really need at the range, and you can always uh, uh, transfer the data over to your PC app and, uh, and review it uh, at the house uh, when you get home. <clears throat> Essentially, uh, this is the demo mode uh, uh, for it, and it gives you a good idea of what the, the software can do. Basically, you start a new session, and it uh, takes a, an initial screen photo. And then every time you take a shot, you hit the show shot button at the, on the bottom right there, and it'll show you where that shot hit. Uh, basically, it just uh, flips back and forth between the previous image and, and the current image. And then as you take each shot, you hit the show shot button, and it'll show you where that shot hit. Uh, it's great for, you know, it's much better than a spotting scope. Uh, I really, uh, really like this app. Um, you can also take several shots and then hit the show shot and it'll show you where all those shots hit. And then take a bunch more. And uh, even though the target has a bunch of holes in it already, you can still see where those shots hit. Um, so you can just keep doing that. And again, even though, <coughs> excuse me, even though you have a uh, screen full of uh, holes or a target full of holes, you can uh, still take a single shot and see where that shot hit. Uh, you see it's there in the uh, bullseye there flashing. So it's, it's, it's a wonderful little device. I mean, uh, and 
for about the same amount of money. Uh, the uh, phone app is free, of course, uh, but the uh, the camera, you know, they, they have versions anywhere from $300 to $1,000. And uh, you're going to pay several hundred for a good, uh, a good spotting scope. So, uh, you know, for a comparable price, you get something much, much better than a spotting scope. Just takes a little extra setup like you saw uh, earlier in the video. This is my Caldwell Lead Sled DFT. Uh, DFT stands for Dual Frame Technology. Uh, apparently having two tubes on the bottom is technology. But uh, I use this uh, to, to take out the uh, human factor uh, in uh, testing my loads and, and uh, zeroing my scopes, things like that. You can get uh, uh, lead bags here. I fill them with lead shot. Uh, to weigh it down a little bit, I got about 25 pounds of lead shot in there. Uh, keeps the uh, keeps the rifle very steady uh, while you're shooting. Uh, so it's uh, it, you know I'm not a, a steady enough shot to uh, to test my loads without it. So uh, Cody and I use this to uh, to test loads, zero scopes. It's a great little uh, little deal. They, this is the more expensive one. I think they, they have several that are little less expensive <clears throat> that don't have the DFT technology um, but you know that's uh, that's my lead sled I also uh, have a couple of uh, Midland two-way radios that I use uh, so that Cody and I can communicate uh, you know when he's you know four or five hundred yards away from me uh, you know we're out in the field we don't have cell phone cell phone coverage uh, this uh, works good for uh, uh, communicating. It also has weather band on it. I think I got this one set up for weather. Miles an hour. Pressure 29.93 yeah. so inches and steady. I can get weather while I'm out in the field that way and uh, Cody and I can communicate without uh, uh, you know when we don't have cell phone uh, coverage. This is my gun buggy from uh, do all outdoors uh, I use this for three gun uh, competition cowboy action shooting uh, that sort of thing it's got uh, mounts here for both uh, for two long guns I've got my shotgun and my uh, AR uh, loaded up there and it's got uh, a step here I put my ammo there it's got a little pouch down in the bottom uh, for whatever I want to put in there I think I got some uh, some ears in there the front here has a uh, uh, muzzle protector, so you put the muzzles in the little pockets there, and still got a little room for some extra doodads uh, to put in. In the back, I've got my ammo broom hanging from the back here. I've got my my uh, case uh, bag for collecting cases. Uh, it's got room for. Uh, sodas on the side here. Uh, I can put larger sodas or you know big Gatorade cans or whatever or uh, you know I, I usually use them for my uh, put my eyes uh, and ears in in there. Um, so it's it's a handy little thing. It's from Do All Outdoors. I, you can get them from Amazon or Midway USA. One thing you do want to do though is if you get one of these Plan on replacing the inner tubes that come with the wheels because the ones that come with it are crap. Uh, you will have a flat tire the first time you use it and probably three flat tires. Uh, so you want to go out to Walmart, pick up uh, some heavy duty uh, uh, inner tubes for it. Uh, they'll run you about, I don't know, 10, 15 bucks for a set of four of them. Uh, but you'll want to do that right away because the, the inner tubes that come with the thing are just junk. Um, at any rate, that's my, uh, that's my gun buggy. Uh, I don't usually take it to the range when I'm just uh, going out to shoot, but I do use it for competition, three gun, and, uh, and cowboy action. Now, you saw my uh, ammo broom hanging off of my uh, gun buggy there. Basically, uh, what it is, is a cage. It comes with a bunch of handle segments here, and it's a, a wire cage that uh, you attach the handle to 
And if you're a, a reloader, you know that uh, <clears throat> collecting all that brass from the ground is a real backbreaker. Uh, so you attach that, and then you can attach each uh, each of the segments here and, and make a, uh, you know, basically a broom out of it. You know, it becomes a, a big long broom handle. Uh, then what you can do is use it, you know, you see all this brass on the ground here, and you just take it and you roll the uh, ammo broom over the brass. Works a lot better on the actual ground that it's working on my table here, but you get the idea. You just kind of roll it over the brass and it picks the brass up in the uh, little cage here. And it comes with a bucket attachment. And what you're supposed to be able to do then is put it in here and uh, turn it on the bucket attachment and it'll drop all the brass into the bucket. Now I, I found it's, it's easier to grab some of the brass here. Doesn't roll so well on the table, but all right. I found it's a lot easier to just, uh, you know, use my finger to open it up and then just shake it out, you know. And uh, makes uh, the job of collecting brass a whole lot easier than uh, bending over and picking up each piece uh, uh, individually. That's all for this video. I hope you liked it. If so, please click the like button. Maybe even subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching, and happy reloading.